Haley. Haley. Haley, do you want to meet our new friend? Do you want to meet our new friend? No? All right, well, fine. I'll introduce it to everyone else. Ta-da! So I was at the All Cleveland Reptile Show. I think that's the full name. Um, they're just a monthly, a relatively small monthly expo um, that meets up every like second or third Sunday of the month, whatever. Um, anyway, I um, I was kind of wanting to get a new snake, and I've been debating getting a boa for a while. So I finally took the plunge. Um, so this is an Aztec, um, morph, um, Colombian boa or a BCI or boa imperator. It's like 50 billion names, but either way, that's what it is. Um, and I finally got the, um, enclosure all cleaned up because I was like, oh yeah, I've got an extra enclosure. It's fine. Yeah. Except it hadn't been cleaned yet, so she, or I'm sorry, he, all of my other animals are female. This is my first male in a while, so I keep having to keep forgetting to, it's he. Um, and he doesn't have a name yet, it'll take me a while. Um, he's actually just been chilling. I gave him a, uh, a post, post-expo, um, uh, water soak. Uh, that's good for inspecting for mites, because if they happen to have any, then, um, you know, they usually either float around in the water, or when you let them dry out on the paper towels, you can, um, inspect the paper towels. And, uh, everything looks good. Um, granted, the, the, the seller I bought this from at the expo had pretty good, uh, pretty good animal reviews on his, uh, his Facebook page, so... Yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, this, this little one was only one of, I think, three, three, uh, Imperators that I found at the expo, like, there was tons and tons of ball pythons, my god, but, uh, yeah, it was hard to find, it was hard to find any, uh, uh, bow Imperators, so, uh, I got lucky in the fact that not only did I find one, I actually found a pretty cool morph, um, it was this or a jungle, um, but I really liked the, the pattern on this Aztec one. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know if there's any other, I don't know if there's any other things at play here. It was just marked as an Aztec. I'm assuming these are normal colors, just the, the pattern morph is different. Kind of like a, uh, normal ball python versus an enchi ball python. Same colors, different pattern. Um, anyway... I better get this little guy into his new setup. Oh, come on, little one. And as you can see, it's it's a hatchling. He he's still he's still quite small, which is good because I don't have um right now he's going into a 20 gallon long until he gets big enough to upgrade. Now, if I can't afford the adult size enclosure right off the bat, I'm going to do a tub setup. And I'm, these, these guys do take quite a while to grow out to their full size and males stay smaller from what I've heard. So I should have plenty of time to be able to afford, a. I think it's recommended for either a six, either a six foot long or an eight foot long enclosure. If he stays small, a six foot should be fine. Probably do a, uh, what do they do, like two by two by six or something like that? And anyway, actually, if he stays small enough, a uh, uh, two by two by four would actually work. So, yeah. Um, so he is just, he's being so good. He's actually been such a good boy the whole time. Like um, when I was holding him at the uh, expo, he just stuck his little snoot up like, who are you? What are you doing? Like, I see some videos of hatchlings that have never been held, and they're just like, you know, hissy and pissy and all sorts of stuff. So, um, unfortunately, because I don't have the ability to 
do a out of room quarantine. Um, I'm just going to basically do my uh, common sense method, which is um, anything I do with this animal is going to be done last out of the, like if I have to do any care between all of them, this one's going to be last. Um, and uh, obviously wash your hands between handling animals. Um, I have heard there's a risk of that body inclusion disease, um, but the way they said it, there's no real good way to test it. It's kind of like, eh, it's a risk. You might, you're just going to have to take it. Um, so I've done all my research on that. And uh, so far, I have not had any problems doing an in-room quarantine as long as I obviously don't do stupid things like if I go from it's like a hospital room go in one room come out wash your hands go into another room and come out wash your hands wash your hands between your animals so um but yeah still just a basic setup and this is mostly to uh just keep an eye on poop Make sure they're eating okay, pooping okay, if there's any problems. If, God forbid, the snake did somehow get mites, I would see it. Probably keep them on the paper towels for a few weeks, and then once everything looks okay, I'm going to flip them over to the same substrate I use for my um, ball python, which is a combination of eco-earth, some sort of, uh, I think it's reptichip. It's either reptichip or forest floor. It's one of those two. Um, and then, uh, uh, sphagnum moss. I had to remember that. Um, I found mixing that and keeping it just, uh, damp helps with the humidity. And these are a high humidity species. So it's pretty much like a ball python as far as care goes. From what I've read, it's just, it gets bigger. <laughs> so, um, yep. And of course I will always be keeping an eye on new and better ways to, to care for my animals, but for right now, this will work, and uh, I'm hoping he will decide to go in his hide at some point. He's he's definitely tongue-flicking, but um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll leave him be, and he'll decide what he wants to do in a bit, and as always, thank you for watching.